James H. Gray, one of Canada's most notable social historians, the author Brian Brennan, an award-winning and best-selling author who specializes in books about colorful personalities and the social history of Western Canada, joins us to talk more about this book. Hi. Hi. Glad you're with us. Now, first of all, um, I know there's a park in Calgary. It's the James H. Gray Park, yes. and I've driven by it many Who's James Gray? You James, know. James, oh yes, yeah. And uh, in fact, I, I have known about James Gray for, for many, many years um, because I, uh, well, one of the first things that I did after I, I came to Calgary in the, uh, in the 1970s was naturally when you move to a new place, I mean, you want to read books about it. And uh, that's when I discovered the, uh, the books of, uh, of James and, uh, and I was very impressed by the fact that he made history so accessible. I mean, this wasn't dry as dust academic stuff. As a matter of fact, he didn't do footnotes, mm -hmm. and he was quite proud of that. He said, um, I tell the stories of the people, the real people. And uh, so that's when I became uh, aware of him as a, as a writer. Um, then late in the day, I, when I realized that nobody had actually ever done a biography of James Gray, I thought, well, nobody else does it, I've got to do it. And so I did. So who is he really? He's quite a significant character and very colorful past he has as well. Well, yes, a very tough past mm -hmm. actually because his, um, he grew up in, uh, in Winnipeg, uh, the First World War. Um, his father was an alcoholic and um, so there was a lot of poverty uh, in, the, in the family. And uh, then when he, he sort of reached a point where he was, um, he, he was starting to, to being a self-starter really, um, he was he was starting to get work. Um, he uh, he did public school when he was about 16, and then he started earning a living. And then wham, in the uh, in the 1930s, the depression hits. So what are you going to do? I mean, you know, having uh, had poverty when he was much younger, and now he's he's dealing with with this economic situation which nobody has got any control over. And uh, so he was on unemployment relief in Winnipeg during the 1930s. And that was the point at which he decided that he was going to become a writer. Um, and so he, he read books, he took books out of the Winnipeg Public Library, and then he started writing articles, and he wrote, and he wrote, and he wrote, and he wrote 200,000 unpublished words before finally the newspaper, the Winnipeg Free Press, accepted one of his freelance articles. So that's where he started. Within a few years, he was working as a journalist, and a very successful journalist. And then he came to Calgary in the, in the 1940s, and uh, after he left journalism, he started writing books of history. So, a real inspiration. Huge inspiration. And yeah. he also spent in the sanatorium a couple yes, of Yes, he did. Yes, that was because he, he suffered, uh, that was kind of the, the, the lowest point for him mm -hmm. during the Depression. I mean, first of all, he's on unemployment relief. And in order to qualify for unemployment relief, um, they had these make work projects that, that they were involved in. And uh, they, were, they were cleaning uh, back lanes and they were picking dandelions from city boulevards, that kind of thing, you know, in order to qualify for your unemployment check. And, um, and then he got sick. He went to the doctor and the doctor said, uh, you've got tuberculosis. And so it was off to the, uh, the sanatorium then for, uh, for six or eight months. And that was actually the point when, because now he couldn't do anything. That's really when he started reading. I mean, his, the first books that he read were in the library of the sanatorium. And then eventually he started reading books from the, the Winnipeg Public Library. And it was, um, was self-education. That's, that's what he did. Yeah, he taught um, himself. Interesting yeah. uh, as well, you start off, um, the first chapter of the book is about him receiving the Order of Canada. Yes. So significant achievement. And then you go back through the chronology of his life, and really yeah. interesting chronology. But one of the most interesting things that we should talk about is how he wrote about Western culture and what was really going on in the social lives of the first settlers. Yeah, well, the thing was, he was, uh, I mean, it, it, it arose out of curiosity, really, uh, that he, he just wondered what did, the, did uh, these, these, these young guys who came in to, to, to build the railway and, uh, and then settled here as, 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 as homesteaders and settlers, um, what did they do for recreation? What did they do in their spare time? And uh, because he hadn't read about it anywhere, he decided, well, if uh, is, is writing about it, I'll write about it. And that's where it started. And talk about some of that, because that's really interesting. Well, yes. The, uh, I mean, the, there was the, the aspect of, of, for example, I mean, he, he knew that there was booze. Where did the booze come from? Um, and then he discovered that, that prostitution was, in fact, the first major industry in Western Canada. And this came as a revelation. So he said, well, if nobody else is writing this book, I'm going to write it. The book was called Red Lights on the Prairies, and it was hugely successful. I mean, it sold not just in Canada, but down into the United States as well. It was a very, very successful title. So um, he knew how to capture uh, subjects that, uh, that he knew that 
that, that people would be interested in and, uh, and wrote about it very successfully. The Pierre Burton of Western Canada. The Pierre Burton of Western Canada. But you know, interesting as well is his first book. He wrote it, I believe, about 20 years before it actually got published. That's right, yeah. yeah. It, it went through a number of different um, uh, sort of back and forth. Um, he had a publisher that was interested in the, in the book. This it was called The Winter Years, and uh, it was about the, the Depression and largely about his own experiences living through the Depression, mm -hmm. being on unemployment relief and so on. And um, a publisher had actually suggested to him that he write this book, and so he did when he was working as a, as a reporter for the Winnipeg Free Press in the Parliamentary Press Gallery in Ottawa. In his spare time, he wrote this book. And then the publisher sort of lost interest in it, and so he put the manuscript aside. And, um, and 20 years later, he still had the manuscript in his satchel, and uh, he, he figured, well, this is a good book. This book ought to be published. And uh, so, in fact, he went back to the same publisher that he had been talking to way back uh, 20 years previously, and uh, this time they were actually more interested. And uh, it was a bit of a struggle. It uh, took a lot of rewriting and editing, and uh, in fact, he cut so much out of the, the original manuscript that he had enough for his second book uh, from what he cut out of the, the manuscript. Um, but eventually on his, uh, his sixth birthday in uh, September of 1966, 40 years ago, he was, uh, he, his, his first book was published and uh, that was the 20 year struggle. Interesting life and he's done so many other things as well and you can read all about it in the book. Yes indeed. Well thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we've been talking with Brian Brennan, author of How the West the life and times of James H. Gray. We're back in just a moment. Canmore's new bylaws banning smoking in all public places. I'm Lisa Walansky and we'll tell you why this has the hotel and lodging business up in arms. That's all coming up on the Shot TV magazine. Local, relevant. You're watching Shaw TV. Shaw TV and the Calgary Immigrant Aid Society are.